I'm Brian Clancy, and welcome to the Fulcrum Democracy Forum, Meet the Change Leaders Program, made possible by our dear friends at CityBiz. It's all about celebrating the work of America's most innovative and inspiring leaders who are working to change our toxic politics. We always do two things in these interviews. We learn about what these leaders are doing and why it matters, but we also make sure to make it very clear how all Americans can get involved in supporting their efforts in 2024 and beyond. And today I am delighted to have uh, Becca Curl, who is the Executive Director of Living Room Conversations with us. Um, what impresses me so much about Living Room Conversations and Becca's work is the way they make talking across differences, including our most charged wedge issues, something all Americans can do, whether it's in their living rooms, kitchens, backyard barbecue, or at work. Um, it can feel so intimidating to all of us to bring these topics up, even with close friends and family, uh, which is why so often uh, we leave these thoughts and opinions that we have unsaid. But with, listen, uh, with uh, Living Room Conversations tools and support, really rich and healing discussions across differences become possible again. So I want to dive in and learn more about uh, Becca's magic and her team's magic right now. So Becca, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, great. My first question is sort of the elevator pitch um, for Living Room Conversations. So what's the most important thing you want all Americans to know about your organization and the role it's playing in help, helping address polarization and toxic politics? So Living Room Conversations works to connect people through conversation within their communities and across all of our many differences. And the one takeaway I hope people have from our time together is how critical conversations around difference are to healing our divides and how easy and accessible it can be. Thank you. That's a great. Yeah. I was you, like, how, you, how concise do you want my elevator pitch? Because I can keep going. That's, that, that's, that's pretty concise. Well, my follow-up question allows you to expand it. So you had me by floor two. So, you know, some people do an elevator pitch that requires a hundred story building. So I love the fact that you, you stuck the landing on that one. Um, and, and my next question is basically a follow-up, which is to say an elevator pitch is not enough. And, um, you know, I'm very familiar with, with what you folks do and have enormous respect for it. And you have one of the richest tool sets, if not the richest tool set in America on helping people address a whole range of issues and helping them through step by step, making it less scary and intimidating. So, so you know, feel free to go into a little bit more detail on what you guys offer, what you do, the impact it's had. Of course. Um so research shows that one of the best ways to reduce polarization is intergroup contact. And when we can meaningfully connect with others who have different beliefs, political stances, and identities, it makes us harder for, them to view, for us to view them as the enemy. And having enemies can be exhausting. And what we've seen is that this na sense of national division, division is trickling all the way down into our personal relationships. Um, one of the statistics that makes me kind of my heart hurt, <laughs> is that in 2016, one out of six Americans stopped talking to friends and family because of the presidential election. And as I talk to people around the country, I always ask them, what conversations do you wish you were having in your community? We want to be able to talk about the hard stuff. And what gets most in, often in the way is a lack of confidence, opportunity, or resources. So that's where all of our focus is. We are focused on creating connections and understanding with our easy to use resources that are massively scalable, accessible, and sustainable. Essentially, we wanna bring dialogue to the masses. And we currently have over 160 conversation guides that are free to use and download on a wide variety of topics, ranging from everything from mental health, belonging, listening courageously to abortion, gun safety, uh, and, and other more challenging topics. And we kind of look at how do we shift social norms? So we have this great resource, like you mentioned, that anyone can use. You can go, you can download it, you can have a conversation today, like immediately after you listen to this um, podcast. But we... And, and every single City Biz viewer should yes, do just that. Yes, please do. And then let us know about it. I would love to hear about the conversations that you have. 
Um, but we're also mindful that in order to shift the social norms that we're looking to make change in, um, we need to reach individuals, communities, and society as a whole. So one of my favorite aspects of our work is actually our communities of practice. So these include local leaders from libraries, faith communities, civic groups, and higher ed who've developed a practice of monthly community conversations. And we know that communities are where a lot of the magic happens in building trust um, and investing in local capacity to address issues is, is kind of this really beautiful sweet spot. Um, I can give one brief example. We have the Heathmere Center for Cultural Engagement in Beverly, Massachusetts. And they work in partnership with the local library to hold monthly conversations. And even just this year, what we, what we see is that this kind of helps to generate a baseline of trust in communities so that they can tackle things that come up. And so a lot of these communities of practice are being responsive to what happens on the ground. And Heathmere Center just recently expanded into the neighboring town to have a series of conversations around race. They also just started a youth core of high school students who will help facilitate conversations. And so it's, it's like this little seed that's planted. A conversation can seem so simple um, and irrelevant sometimes, but really, you're just investing in your capacity to be comfortable um, disagreeing with other people and to be able to step back from a defensive or a judgmental position to really be curious about the experiences of, of the other people in your life. I, I, um, I saw a video online where, where you have some differences in your own family. So you're, you're, you're walking the talk on this stuff. And uh, and testing it at home, and um, and and it looks like it worked very well. So so that's you know that's encouraging. Yeah, and, and I think what happens sometimes is it feels like there's a trend where the issues or topics we care so deeply about become part of our identity. So we've gotten to this really high stakes place where if someone rejects how I feel about this issue or doesn't agree with me, it feels like they're rejecting me as a person. And so being able to step back and have these kinds of conversations, like all of our questions talk about your personal experience rather than your opinions. And so I've had a, a lot of opportunity to practice that in my own family. We're very politically diverse. We have people on the extreme left, the extreme right, and a bunch of people in the middle, um, libertarians, kind of, kind of everything in the mix. And I remember during the last presidential election, just so many conversations with my parents about how are you navigating this choice? Like what's informing it? And so we were just really honest with each other. I'm really worried about this, or I don't know what to, decision to make. And it allowed us to stay in really close relationship with each other, even though we ultimately ended up voting differently. But it was like this, this open form of communication where we were curious about each other's positions instead of dismissive and saying, well, that's crazy. And anyone who votes that way is fill in the blank. Well, we're, we're, we're delighted that you stress test this at home, <laughs> which is very important. And, uh, and it's related to, to, to my next question. You've actually given us a lot of reason to have hope. But this is a tough year for a lot of people and going into a national election that is so charged. And when do we have an election that isn't charged anymore? Um, I, you know, I'm curious about what, what, what you've seen happen over the last year that 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 gives you hope. The the library example was one of them. Is is there another example you want to you want to provide to our viewers that uh, gives them a sense that that without quitting their day job and devoting 100% to this, they can actually make progress in their own living rooms, kitchen tables, and maybe in their communities. Yeah, I'll give you a broad example and then a more specific example. So broadly speak speaking, we track the downloads of our guides every month. And for the past many, many years, mental health, race, and women in leadership have been our top three downloads every month. But since October of 2022, forgiveness has either been number one or number two. And it feels really reflective of how tired we are of fighting of being divided, and how much we might be ready to find our way back to each other. We also see, as we check these downloads of guides, we see spikes that correspond to current events. So for example, after the overturning of Roe v. Wade, our abortion guide rose to the top for several months. 
Um, after the school shooting in Uvalde, we saw a 547% increase in downloads for our Mental Health for Educators guide. And most recently, we, we published a guide called Conversations in Troubled Times as a response to what's happening in Gaza and Israel and other just really tragic events. And it shows me that people want a better way to talk about what's going on. And so that's hopeful that it is one of these instincts that we want to be able to talk about it. And it's really heartening to know that we have resources that people can turn to in that moment to say, let's, let's sit down and let's talk about it. And then more specifically, we've been working with the National Association for Community Mediation to develop a school community toolbox to help schools address the tension and conflict that's increasingly at their doorstep. And we're wrapping up a pilot project where we've worked with communities in Nebraska, Ohio, Georgia, Washington, and Virginia, where local community mediation centers are partnering with schools and other advocacy groups to conduct listening sessions and community conversations to help identify and address needs. And we have this beautiful meeting where monthly we come together and the group learns from each other. And I always walk away so inspired by the commitment people have to making a difference in their own communities. Th thank you so much for sharing the big picture um, and, and also you know, yet another example of people leaning in. I, I, I also know going forward, I'm, you know, I'm curious about what you, what you and the organization are going to lean into this year. And, and I know, and go in any direction that you would want to go, I know you're leaning into the issue of trust in elections, for example. And um, I'd love to hear whatever you want to emphasize as being areas that you're really leaning into this year. Yeah, I mean, you said it. Our focus this year is trust in elections. And it can seem so discouraging or such a big topic where it's hard to make any real impact. But the beauty and what gives me hope is that elections are all administered in local communities. <laughs> And we know that the local communities, that's the place where you get movement. People are committed to making their schools safer, getting along with their neighbors, getting things done. And so we, in our approach to this Trust in Elections campaign is to create a toolbox for communities who want to lean in. And the idea is that they start with a conversation locally, and then we can connect these communities to each other through our network to give them this added sense of a national effort. And then at the same time, we're organizing high profile conversations to model the value of connecting across political divides. And there's so much energy and momentum on countering the negativity and pessimism of this election year, not only with living room conversations, but within this larger bridging movement. And I, one of the, Additional roles I have is sitting on the steering committee of the Bridging Movement Alignment Council. And this year we're partnering with the National Governors Association and their Disagree Better campaign to really um, amp up efforts to help people understand that there's a better way to disagree. We can still be respectful. We can even be curious and it doesn't threaten our deeply held beliefs. It just gets us in a place where we can actually be working together um, and seeing that there's there's like a higher goal or a higher way of you know moving this country forward and, and healing us. Um, one of the specific campaigns that we're doing, we always look to partner with people. So our toolbox will say, here's how you can start with a conversation. And then here's this lovely list of fantastic organizations like the Citizen Connect, um, fair elections pledge like that we have all of these people that we want to point to so that you can take dialogue and and start doing something together um, and one of the things that we're partnering with resolutionaries the disagree better campaign as well as the former members of congress is to do a national conversation tour on higher ed campuses so we can you know, model former members of Congresses from across the aisle talking to each other respectfully and then follow it up with some, you know, do it in the classroom, do it on campus, do it in your community. Uh, I think again and again and again, what I come back to is I hope people see themselves in this work and then see a doorway that they can go through. And even if it's as simple as having a conversation about trust in elections, 
that maybe that will help inoculate us a little bit against the the distrust. Um, you know, statistics show right now that <laughs> no matter who wins, there's a large portion across all the parties who will feel like democracy is broken. Um, and so as big and heavy as that seems, I'm also really hopeful that this gives us a moment, you know, the people in the civic engagement field, people in democracy reform, people doing the bridging differences work to be able to say, oh, look, we've got something for you to do. <laughs> like, this is, this is what we do. And this is the moment where we can all lean in and try and make a difference. Well, I can't, I can't imagine an initiative that is more relevant to the moment we're in and the year we're in. And I also deeply appreciate, and, and I have personally seen it, um, the degree of collaboration and your orientation to really facilitating deep, rich civic journeys for all Americans, where, where living room conversations will play a me very meaningful role, but you're also very conscious of there, there can be a road before it and there can be a road after it and then they can loop back around and, and, and you're, you're always, you're highly collaborative and that we need that more that in Washington, state houses everywhere, but you folks are, are walking the talk on that big time. Um, so thank you so much. And, and this is, I will say to our viewers again, this is all on the Living Room Conversations website and you should be, you know, maybe even peeking at it now during the interview, but certainly right after. Um, the, my next question is a personal question. You've had an amazing background, um, incredible skills that are very, uh, that have been honed, that are, that are a perfect fit with what you're doing right now, but you also have had a lot of different choices and you've chosen to lean into probably the road less taken and the road that's rockier <laughs> than probably almost any other road um, on planet Earth right now. And, and, and I'm, I'm curious about, about your motivations because, you know, a lot of, a lot of our viewers are, are asking that same question. I care about the country. I want it to be, be better. I know it's not heading in the right direction. Um, I want to bequeath some of the gifts we've been given to my children and grandchildren. But, but they're trying to find like an arc and a path and a purpose. And I think your personal uh, path would be inspiring to people. So would you be willing to share that? Of course, I love personal questions. Um, so I grew up in a town of about 17,000 people in Maine, and this is pre-internet days. So my worldview was pretty limited by the people around me. And as I, you know, as soon as I graduated, I was like, get me out there, let me see everything. And experience after experience, kind of opened my eyes to there's so many different ways to move through this world, uh, even in our country. I mean, the United States is huge and there's so many different cultural differences as you move from state to state and everything else. And so, I, you know, I always felt drawn to connecting with people and understanding people. And I've done kind of, kind of a random past where I've done things like championing the idea of family capital as a solution to sustainable development at the UN. I worked in special education at a public school in Rome, Italy. I experienced the education and opportunity gap as part of the Teach for America program. And in my own community, I piloted a courtroom monitoring project to increase awareness of domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse in my state. Experiences are absolutely transformative. And through each of these seemingly sort of disparate experiences, I've learned to care deeply about people and issues I didn't know about. We don't know what we don't know. And I learned really quickly that the best way forward is by working with the community and generating more connections and understanding rather than focusing solely on fighting the good fight. And so living room conversations and this idea of community dialogue really appealed to me because it really is a first step to generating understanding, awareness, um, relationships and investing in skills that are inherent in dialogue, like respect, listening, authenticity, and curiosity can change the world. So these basic bridging skills open doors for real social change and political reform. Um, this us versus them dichotomy doesn't really allow us to progress because someone's always left behind. And that's kind of where I found 
my home is this is something that I can do that will help benefit all of these social issues that I care about. And that allows me to be curious about all of these issues and all of these people and all of these communities. And to, to be able to make a difference, I still continue to host living room conversations in my own community um, and, and, and continuing to expand my network and who we bring in, like bringing in the city council and the mayor and advocacy groups. But to be able to do that and invest in the national capacity of different communities to do this is something that I can't imagine walking away from. And, you know, I have five kids <laughs> and I see all of this division and negativity and social isolation, you know, the U Surgeon General's report on the epidemic of loneliness, and that's not the world I want my kids to inherit. <laughs> so even though there are sort of tough times or you ask yourself, am I really <laughs> making a difference? Maybe this is just a drop in the bucket. I've found that by zooming in on that drop, to the actual conversation that happened. Um, just yesterday, I was in this beautiful event on self-compassion and someone said their takeaway from the conversation was, you can feel love for someone across the world in just a few minutes. So it's when you can zoom in to the small conversations that are happening, it helps to kind of tether and ground me in this work where if I'm just reading headlines or just scrolling on social media, it can seem <laughs> like almost a lost cause. Well, th thank you so much for sharing that path. And, 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 and even though um, th there were some cutbacks and switchbacks and you know, there, there was clearly a through line of values and, and a desire to be the change that you wanted to see in the world, and, and, and what I'm hearing is that, that your work with Living Room Conversations is sort of a capstone. It's a bringing together. It's a synthesis of everything you learned um, and providing that on-ramp for people to go on a journey that's not based on fear, uh, but that's based on possibility. Um, and, and, and being familiar with what you folks do and your tool set, um, I know it works and, uh, and I'd say to any of our, of our listeners, give one a try. They're, they're structured, they're straightforward, but what's behind them is very sophisticated efforts to essentially you know, sweep the, the, the living room or the kitchen or whatever for, for, for interpersonal landmines first, and, and then allow people to get back to, to finding their, um, the humanity in each other. Um, so and that's again, what all of our social issues in the end are, are human issues. And, and so that's part of what a living room conversation does is it centers the human experience within an issue. So there are other forums where you can get into facts and experts and go back and forth. And this one is just to say, what does this topic look like in your life? Like, tell me, tell me your story about this. You know, let's talk about immigration. Like, what are you bringing to your conversation about immigration? Like, how has it impacted your life? And that it, it's a reminder that at the end of the day, there are very real human experiences that help to inform our political stances and, and beliefs that seem so rigid, but so much of it comes from a place of, well, this is, this is how it looks in my life. Like this has been my experience with it. So it can be really profound. And I would say not even just in hearing these stories from others, but every time I'm in a conversation, I learn more about myself. <laughs> so because I'm, I'm sitting, I'm giving time and intention to discussing a topic and I'm answering these questions that are inviting me to be really thoughtful and reflective of my own experience. I always, find out things that you would think I would know by now, like about myself or be like, oh, that's where that idea has come from. Or, oh, I hadn't actually connected all of these dots to see how entwined this topic is in my life. Thank you so much. The, the, the next question is very related, which, which um, you and I have sort of crossed the Rubicon. So we've devoted our lives to this work and, um, but, but I'd like you to talk about what, what citizens who, who are juggling a lot, um, and by the way, you've made it very clear you're juggling a lot as well at home and at work. Um, what, what, what can they do uh, potentially right after they finish watching this video that can get them on a more enriched, positive, problem-solving, um, 
civic journey rather than one where they're grinding their teeth and and pointing fingers, which never feels good. Um, you mentioned our website. Our website is a great place to start. It's just livingroomconversations.org. On the main page, you will see, if you scroll down a little bit, we have a question of the week that we post every week. So it's just our lovely, um, one of our staff members, Anais Maceda, does this beautiful, engaging video where she takes one of the questions from one of our guides and then invites people to respond to it. So immediately, if you want, if you only have five minutes, you can go watch the video and then you can answer the question either by audio, text, or video. And then you can watch and check out the responses of other people. So if you want this really immediate uh, connection with others and to understand what, what a question is like, you can do that. Um, our events page is full of different opportunities. We have a staff member who hosts monthly living room conversations. So if you're not sure and you just want to dip your toe in, you can join Annie and have a conversation. I think this month is on race and ethnicity. The topic rotates every month. And then I would also really encourage you to look at the different topic guides that we have and just start your own conversation. Um, I like to do it as a dinner party and say, hey, you know, everyone come over and I'd love to, I just found this new resource and I want to test it out. So you can use us as an excuse and say, hey, I just listened to this podcast and I really want to try out this guide. Would you come try it out with me? Um, and just, just be open to try it out and then see where that, that leads you. I, I appreciate that. And, and I'll say personally, I've, I've gone to your website and scrolled down all the topic areas when I'm in deep with a friend or something else. And I, and I have I've dug myself a deep hole and I need living room conversations to help me dig out of it. And and the coverage that you ha folks have on the issues that really matter. And these are human issues. They're not political issues. They become politicized. But I, I would uh, I would be surprised if people wouldn't find a match, a tool in your incredibly deep database that can help them in a, in a, in a battle they're having of, of some sort and turn it into not a battle, but finding common ground. Um, and of course, there's our trust in elections work. If you want to bring the trust in elections conversation to your community, it's really easy. We have um, a landing page. You'll see it rotating across the top banner in our website. Um, and, and you can lean in in your own community on that specific topic. Great, thank, thank you so much. Um, last question. Um, you, you, you're you very collaborative as a person and an organization, and, um, and I'd love you to highlight some of the other organizations that you think people should, should check out. Living Room Conversations first, but uh, other, other organizations that you think might um, might be very well worth exploring for people um, watching this, this video. We have so many fantastic partners um, that are doing great work, and we highlight them throughout our website, especially on our Trust in Elections page. You'll see other organizations that are leaning into Trust in Elections that you can check out. Uh, if you're into the political aspect of things, I highly recommend the ActiVote app and the Common Ground Committee scorecard. Those are both fun and interactive. Um, you get to check out you know, how your electeds measure on being able to find Common Ground, and the ActiVote app has a lot of, um, again, can connect you with your local legislators and how they lean on issues, um, and that one's really interactive and great. And then all sides and the flip side are my favorite places to get balanced news feeds that can get you out of your echo chambers and you can sign up for a newsletter and every morning not only do I see how you know a specific news outlet is covering something I also get a glimpse of this is what the left is saying this is what the right is saying and it helps me to kind of find the middle great thank you and and um, I, I'm a little reluctant to plug Citizen Connect because I co-founded it but Becca since you brought it up earlier and it's recorded so there's proof um, I, I would just say that Picking among children in this space is really hard. So there are 600 organizations on Citizen Connect. It's very searchable. We can't tell you what you care about, what your priority is. We don't know where you live. Um, it's an opportunity to find a bunch of amazing organizations. Um, but you could, not, you could not do better than starting with Living Room Conversations as an on-ramp because I, I, I personally have seen the power that it has. And so Becca, 
Thank you so much for everything you do, um, everything you have in your plate, and you're still leaning into Saving America, and uh, we appreciate it enormously. And, and also the stewardship you have for the entire movement, as you alluded to before, you're also playing leadership roles in, in the broader community for bringing America together. So, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And looking forward to seeing how Living Room Conversations continues to innovate through this year and beyond. 